um, I was I was in Philadelphia as an exchange student. Uh, why exchange? Anyway, um, in 1975, I first came from France and, and I studied at the University of Pennsylvania. While I was there, I was on a metaphysical search and uh, checking out different groups. And along the way, one of the people I met was involved with MSIA and referred me to uh, Michael Bookbinder. And I had an appointment with him and connected with him that way and then attended uh, a home seminar in Philadelphia. And uh, I remember what that first seminar was, actually. It was called uh, <laughs> Tuaji, the Gaze of God. That was the first seminar I attended. Uh, I think that was like November 75. And um, then I was checking out different groups, so I didn't really spend a whole lot more time with MSI. But in the following May, the following spring, I think it was in May, I traveled to Boston uh, and, uh, and Michael Bookbinder had moved to Boston at that time. So I, I looked him up and we talked and he said, wow, you know, it's amazing. My, my teacher is in town and he's doing a seminar tonight. So uh, he said, but it's a closed seminar. So let me call him and see if he can come anyway. So he called JR on the phone. I was with him and he said, hey, I have this guy who wants to come to the seminar tonight. And JR said, well, who is he? And, and then he said, yes, he can come. So I, I attended the seminar and that's the first time I met JR physically. And at the end of the seminar, everybody Jared would still stick around and people would come and talk to him. And so I wanted to see what's going on and who this guy is. So I stayed sort of on the outside of the circle where everybody was talking to him. And, and at one point he just looked up straight at me and said, hey, come, come say hi. You know, so I went up and he asked me, I think he said to me actually, you're not from here, are you? And I said, no, I'm, I'm from France. I'm a student and he said oh okay that makes sense and just gave me a hug and then that's all he said and uh, that was my first experience and I knew after I, I'd hugged him something happened and I wasn't sure but uh, I didn't know what to do with it so I just moved on and out from behind the stage comes GR and he walked straight up to us and and called us by our names and we didn't even have name tags or anything and it's like, wow, how does he know us, you know? And then he started telling us where, where we're staying with a, a Lutheran minister back in San Diego. And he seemed to know all of that. And, uh, and then we just chit-chatted for a little bit. And then he moved on. And that was that. So that's the second time I met Jr. in person. And then uh, I moved back to France after that. And, um, and then... The following year, so now we're talking about, I forget exactly when, but probably the following spring, uh, GR, I heard GR was coming to London because it was the first uh, festival of mind, body, and spirit in London for the Queen's uh, Jubilee. Uh, so that, yeah, I forget what year it was, but so MSI had a booth, MSI London, and that would be like Nicholas and Natalie and Paul uh, at the time, had a booth at the festival, and GR was there. And, and I visited and so I met Jr. yet another time uh, there. And then a couple of days later, the staff was doing services in London and I signed up for two services. So, and in those days, Jr. used to be at the location where we did, we did services, so, or where the staff did services. So I went there, got a couple of services and, and, and at the end, I went to the living room and sat like with my back to the window, and Jr. was on the opposite side on the couch, and said, great, I'm going to have finally a chance to really check this guy out. And it'd been like two minutes since I sat down on the floor, and Jr. said, Vincent, what are you doing over there? Come sit next to me. You know, I said, darn. <laughs> so I, um, I went and sat next to him, and, uh, and I started having all kinds of experiences. It sort of took me out of the body, and it was the first time that I really connected all the out-of-the-body experiences I'd been having with, with JR because I finally realized he was the one I was seeing on the other side and he was the one that, that was doing this whole thing. Prior to that, you know, to me it was all these other groups I'd been checking out. I didn't know what was what. So, um, and that, that time uh, I had an experience I, I wouldn't know how to describe. Uh, verbally, but it was very, very powerful. Bottom line was like meeting the traveler 
spiritually on the other side and having the recognition of who Jr. was and, and the traveler in, in the spiritual form. And also, uh, part of the experience was, at one point, I, I felt this tidal wave, is the best way I can describe it, of energy coming my way. And I would say love, basically. And in the moment's notice, I felt like I was going to be taken over by this energy and obliterated, like destroyed. And, and instead of that happening, when the wave hit me, I expanded and realized this is who I am. So that very thing I thought was going to destroy me actually was who I was. And it was, that was the turning point for me. And then Gerald was there and, and I realized, oh my God, you know, this is the guy. So that same day, uh, and then, then Gerard knew exactly what was going on because I was on the verge of tears when that was going on. And Gerard during that time was doing an interview with a journalist as I was sitting next to him. And in the middle of the interview, he interrupted himself and very quickly said, you know, you can put your head on my lap and cry if you want, <laughs> which was exactly what I wanted to do. And of course, I stoically stood there and said, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, and I didn't, but I was, it was very hard not to. Um, and so that day after he was done with the interview, uh, uh, we started talking about my being on staff. And, and he said, well, the one thing about the, the guys that are on, on the team with me is that they are the only people who are 100% dedicated to the work that I do. And inside of me, it's like, I'm one of them. But he never said anything one way or the other. So I went back to France. He went back to the US. And, and when I got back to Paris, I wrote him this long letter about all the things I had experienced on the other side, sitting next to him and all that. And I told him, you know, I know you are the guy, I want to study with you, and I want to be with you physically, and so on. And I never heard back from him. So then it was time for me to go in the Army, and I did that. And um, so a year after the London visit, um, a friend uh, in Paris, Anne Tormeau, who was already involved in MSI doing seminars in Paris, wrote to me while I was in the Army and said, you know, JR is coming to town, why don't you, uh, you know, find a way to, to get there? So at that point I was in jail, and, and I think I talked to you about that before. And, but I was able to get a letter from JR inviting me for a job interview, and they let me out for three days, and then I'm, I spent those days with JR in Paris. And that's when you know, we talked some more. I got, he, got, um, he gave me my initiation, my ordination. I signed up for discourses, all of that at the same time. And he told me at the time, um, well, you still have a bunch of tests to go through, but if if you go through them okay, then by the time you get out of the army, you'll you'll be coming to Los Angeles, and if it all works out, you'll be there by by the end of November. Okay. So as soon as I arrived, um, the only insight that was going on at Christmas time that year was a teen insight one. So I ended up taking the teen insight one, but I was only 22, so I wasn't too out of place. You know? So I took Inside 1 with the teens, and then in January, I took Inside 2, a regular Inside 2. And uh, so that was, you know, I got into Inside right away, or attended the trainings right away. And um, yeah, that's how it started. And, and uh, I forget why I took Inside 3 and followed up with that. The, fir the first part for <laughs> was a process for me because we, went, we were going to Rome, and I, I was, I was one of the staff on the trip, and and uh, so before we went to the Middle East, we were in Rome, and it was uh, around Easter time, I think, and it was actually snowing in Rome, like in March or April of that year. Anyway, we were split into two hotels because the group was pretty big, and, and uh, one day, I forget what the coordination was, but the timing of when the buses were going to be there to pick us up was screwed up. and. And so at the last minute, I, I got a call saying, hey, get the group down there and everybody in the bus by, say, 10 o'clock, when it was supposed to be, you know, 10.30 or whatever. Uh, so it was a bit messy, and I was, like, all flustered because I wasn't sure how to handle it and how to get everybody in the bus on time. And, and I forget exactly what went down, but all I remember is that as a result of that, I was taken off being staff and made into a participant because I was I wasn't like I wasn't like 
responsive enough or I was pushing back or something like that. I forget exactly what. But I know for me it was like a big deal because I went from being staff and having a walk-in, being on the inside of all the communications to just being a participant. And so that was a, a, big, a big learning about you know, just going with the flow and being able to just stay on the ball no matter what was going on. But of course, you know, being a participant was great because I got to take the training and, and, and just experience it from a whole different side. So that was the first, the first one. Uh, we had so many experiences on the pad fours over the years, uh, I wouldn't know what, what to pick. Uh, I remember one time at the Saqqara temple in Egypt, I think it was probably the first time we went to that temple, and there was there's a section of the temple which is like the healing, uh, the healing area, and I remember there were sort of cubicles in the, in in one of the uh, so before the pair you get to the pyramid you go through different corridors and one of them was sort of cubicles on the on, on the ground level and then above it was another row where supposedly, if I remember correctly, the, the healer would be standing above the patient underneath. And uh, we were walking by and Jara said to me, um, just go there and put your head in, inside the cubicle. So the patient would be like facing the wall and there was sort of a, a cubicle and you'd put your head in it. And and uh, so I went there and I, did, and I put my head there and I wasn't sure what was supposed to happen. And the next thing I know, I hear this sound from inside my head that started as my heartbeat. But instead of hearing my heartbeat from outside, it came from, like, from the middle of my head. And then I started hearing like, the sound current from the middle of my head as I was putting my head there. It was just like, I was so startled because I wasn't sure what to make of it and what is this exactly and what is going on. And, and um, that was probably well, my first or second pad four there. And I came out of it, and I, it, it, turned, it, it did something to me. I'm still, it's like it opened my inner ear uh, to really help me, let me hear the sound current the first time, I think, in a really conscious way. So now explain to people what the sound current is. Well, I, like I know how to explain that. Um, well, the words that have been used is the, the energy that comes out of the sound of God. And it's been referred to in various ways, the word of God, so... When God issued creation, He spoke the word, as it says in the Bible, and and um, that sound, whatever word you want to put on it, is in a sense the very essence of God's energy in into creation, and that's also then the stream of the sound of God that we ride back into the heart of God. That's what we know to follow in order to go back into the heart of God. It's a very hypnotic, mesmerizing sound once you hear it. Cool. I got what I want. Now look into the camera and tell Jerry uh, what you want to tell him. Well, Jerry, um, I don't know what life would be without you. Thank God you got me as early as you did. Uh, otherwise, I would have been in a lot more trouble. And um, um, I'm all these years with you, and uh, I would do it all over again and then some. I kind of imagine learning and, and growing as I have without your guidance and your support, your patience, your love, your understanding. And you're the only person I know that I can say understands me from the inside. And that's been probably one of the most valuable and, and greatest testament of loving for me to be known from the inside uh, so I don't ever have to explain myself. Um, Thank you so, so much. I love you more than I can say.